All right, welcome back to the shop. I should say, let's welcome back to Fusion. So we're going to start off drawing out the knobs. I had some inch and a quarter uh, material out in the shop, and um, we're going to draw them first. So we're just going to draw a rough sketch here, um, just the general shape, and, you know, rectangle, or in this case, since I know it's going to be tapered to the back, I went ahead and drew the taper in it. Once I get the basic shape, and then I know what I want the about the size to be, I'll go ahead and dimension it. So I know I want it two inches long, and an inch and a quarter is the material I got. So probably an inch and an eighth is what we'll do here. So to do, since we're going to do a revolve, we're only drawing half of the profile. So instead of it being um, inch and an eighth, we'll do inch and an eighth divided by two. So you just 1.25 divided by two. And here, you know, make a mistake. You just go back, redimension it, 1.25 divided by 2. Now you have the 0.5625, the 9 sixteenths. And that you can go ahead and dimension the rest of it. The back is going to have a half by 20 hole in it. I'm sorry, half by 20 threads in it. So I want to leave a little bit of meat there. So maybe a 16th on either side. So we'll just do 5 eighths. Um, the same thing, 5 eighths divided by 2. And that'll get you half the profile. Um Fusion 360 makes it very easy to do drawings like this and um, use it all the time. So we have those basic shapes. Now, I don't want the sharp edges, so, you know, we'll put a fillet in the corners um, or chamfer or something like that. So we'll just choose fillet from the menu. Um, then just specify what we want. Just want a small break in the back part back there um, just so you don't cut, get your um, hand caught on it. The front part, though, we definitely want a bigger one. So we'll just figure out what looks good on paper here. Um, looks like 0.5. Um, you can choose it. You can or enter it in as a dimension either way. So that's the basic sketch is done. Now you want to create a revolve. Just choose your um, drawing that you want to revolve, and then where you want about what axis you want to revolve it around, and you're done. So right there is the basic new knob for the um, um, drill press. So that's exactly what I want. Of course, it's going to have half by 20 threads back here. So well, we'll go ahead and draw it in there. So choose hole, choose your area. Really doesn't matter what size you do, just ch choose where you want it to go. Um, I'll probably manually do this because it's pretty crusty material and I don't want, I don't have a good way to, I don't have a chuck for the Tormach. So I'll just chuck it up in the old trusty Harbor Freight. Doesn't really matter how deep, probably gonna go about an inch. Um, probably use the same rods out there. Um, might make some new ones, who knows? Might make it a little longer. Um, but then you just, I don't really care what the size hole it was round. I'm going to go ahead and model it. So you just choose the threads that you want and you hit, okay. Now you have your knob modeled with threads in it. Pretty simple. So now that we have it all drawn, um, I reckon we can go ahead and jump into the, um, manufacturing part of this. We'll go ahead and save this drawing first. So everything is ready to go now, so we should be able to easily, um, hopefully, get some cam tool passed. So we'll go ahead and save it. Um, uh, drill press knobs or knob or whatever, just go ahead and save it just so you wouldn't lose your work. Um, hit save. Go from the design workspace into the manufacturing workspace. And it, it, just like anything in Fusion 360, it, it works just left to right. So um, choose your machine. In this case, it's the um, just the generic. And then you choose your body, um, the, where, how much si what size is your stock, just the basic stuff like this. Um, it's a spun profile. I don't know why you choose it. Everybody says to choose it, so we choose it. Um, change the um, stock size. It's 1.25. Um, that's pretty much all you need to do here, as far as I know. Um, I haven't turned but a few things, so I'm sure I'll learn more as I go. So um, from there... We just need to go ahead and um, create the um, turning strategy. So here we just do a rough turn. We'll choose the um, tool, which will be that VBMT, um, that little that little one there. <laughs> um, we'll rotate this around so it matches the orientation on my lathe. Um, from here, you just choose your um, um, what you what do you want to what do you want to do. So it's not much. I'm going to add a little bit of Z clearance to the front. Um, we'll probably leave the back. We might go back just a tad here on there. It's not. I don't think it's really going to matter. Um, um, 
that's about all you have to do. You just hit OK. Um, it looks everything looks right on it. I might slow the machine down here a little bit. If I got five thousand, I'll change four thousand. So once you do that, you hit the enter button and it creates your toolpath. That's your roughing toolpath right there. So it says what, what about eight minutes or something like that of roughing it has to do. So that's very conservative. Um, do the same thing. I'll just choose um, finish. Um, finish turning. And pretty much that's it. So we'll go ahead and simulate it. Uh, but see if anything turns red. I have a feeling there at the front that the side of the tool bit might get caught at there at the front. So we'll just have to keep an eye on that and look and see. We'll speed this up a little bit and everything looks good. Um, didn't see any red there, so we should be good to go. So I think it's time to go out to the shop and make some chips. So here we are at the drill press. And this is why, if you can see this right here where my thumb's at, the reason why I want to put new handles on it. When you're putting pressure on it, it digs right into the palm of your hand and it hurts. So that's what we're going to make today or quickly, hopefully just an hour. So let's get going. Chop up some material first. So we're back in the metal cutting shop or back in the woodworking shop, I should say where the metal cutting setup is also set up. Um, this back part of the shop is 70 feet long, so it's perfect for cutting long sticks of metal. Um, of course, we have the old bandsaw there that uh, tried and true, had it for whoa, 20 years. I've also had this Ryobi um, eight and a half inch compound miter box that I've had for whoo, probably longer than that, 30 years. So while I was you know, wanting to buy a different setup because we cut a lot of angles, I was like, I wonder if this would cut you know metal so i went out and you know buy these diablo steel demon blades and this has been set up like this for oh i don't know five years now cuts like a champ so a little loud but other than that you know it, it, it cuts very good just keep your finger you know keep your fingers out of the way like i always say and then you just pull down on it cuts metal just like a chop saw that's an uh, inch and a quarter you know cuts it great well as luck would have it um, the uh, rods that were inside the, the the lathe I mean I'm sorry the rods that were inside the drill press were 7 16 well I was gonna rethread them half by 20 well that ain't gonna happen with a 7 16 rod so we had to make some new rods um, I just did a simple program in the conversational no need to go to fusion for this one um, we'll run right through the steps. The first thing we're gonna do is face it. So I always like to face it um, starting off the part and working to zero. So I know everything else will start from zero. So that's just the way I do it. I don't I don't know where I picked that up from. I'm sure somebody put that in there or I saw it somewhere. And then the next thing we'll do is do an OD turn to the major diameter. Um, we're going in three quarters of an inch. So you Z end at minus 0.75. Our initial stock size is half inch. We're gonna go down to four nine for the major diameter. It's just a hair under, which is fine. Um, it works better for thread anyway. The next thing we'll do is come back, put a chamfer on the part. At Z zero, I just left it at half. I could change that to four nine to get a truly um, 50,000 uh, chamfer on the end of it, but what the heck, we'll leave it like that. Next thing we'll do is um, we'll do threading. So it's just a half 20 um, single point thread. Um, I'm probably gonna change to uh, put the coolant on for this, but I'm gonna try and film it so you can see it. But that's as simple as it is. You just post it to a file and then you append each each additional step that you want to it. So it works pretty good. It was fairly quick, um, maybe 10 minutes altogether. Um, so we're gonna switch back over here to the lathe and see if I can't get a shot of this. I may have to, uh, I have to turn the coolant on with the thread. It, I know it's got 35 passes, but I've been using uh, just cold rolled steel and it, and it the finish is coming out really, really good on it, so I don't want to really mess with it. So anyway, we'll go back over here and we'll hit cycle start and see what happens. All right, we're back at the lathe. Um, try to get you a shot from here. Probably not the best thing. I don't have a way to put it on there. So uh, I've been using, I ordered these uh, Tormach um, serrated um, 5C collets. I like them a lot. You don't even have to use the wrench on the backside to hold them in place. They really hold really, really good. So. I'm gonna tighten it down with my hand, shut the cover on the motor. 
Um, need to set my Z. So whoop, let's change to the right tool here. So I really don't care where it's at. I'm gonna hit uh, T0505 in the MDI. So it switches to tool five. Go back to the main screen. And I just wanna be inside of that, which is that's probably close enough. So we're gonna Z it out from there. We're gonna hit cycle start. Should be good to go. So it's gonna go in out here and act like it's doing the tool change and come back in. Then it'll probably cut air for a little bit. Oh, got lucky. Hit one more time. Then again, it's going to come back here like a doing another tool change. Of course, my air compressor kicks on right as we're doing this. So, so it's just going to skim that half inch down to the uh, OD, major OD of the thread. Probably could have done that one out, but I didn't feel like messing with it. Just let, let the machine do what it wants to do. Comes out here, acts like it wants to do another tool change. Put a little chamfer on the end of it there. Now we're going to switch over to the threading tool. Let me blow that off right quick. Switch over to the threading tool. And we'll hit the cycle start button on that. Like I said, I might have to turn the coolant on on this. So, depends on what it sounds like. I don't want to ruin my iPhone getting coolant on it either. But. I tried to run fewer passes on it, and um, it just doesn't leave good finish on that old gummy 1018. It just, you know, I found that this does much, much better. I could go get my cutting line put on there, but I'd be afraid it's swinging around too. So we'll just let this run and see what it looks like. Hopefully it doesn't show any tearing. Sounds pretty rough. Yeah, it looks, doesn't look the best, so. Definitely a much cleaner thread when it's got coolant running on it. So, the thread's up nice and tight, too. Very, very little slop. So, we'll go ahead and knock out um, the rest of these, and then we'll start on the handle. Turn the cooling off so you can see. I'm gonna turn it right back on there. Working like a champ. All right, here it is running. Um, I've actually got it set a little higher, feed and fees. Just trying to get it, you know, where it's cutting a good chip and it's cutting a good chip now. I've turned the cooling off, but I'm gonna turn the coolant back on. But you can see, man, it, it does a great job. On 1018 still, I'll take it. Back now we're not going to be able to see. All right, so it's out with the old and in with the new. So these are a little bit longer. Um, if they're too long, we can always cut them and boot them and uh, redo them. No big deal. Um, I thought I'd want them a little longer. So I'm going to get some red Loctite just to help hold all this stuff together. Just, uh, just a little dab will do you on this stuff, don't go overboard. Maybe it should run a tap through these things. Oh, it's going in good. There we go. Oh, much, much better. Let's do another one here. Let's put the not so pretty, the not the prettiest one towards the back where you'll never see it. Getting it lined up now that I'm backwards. Come on now. There we go. Everything was cut on the Tormach. The threads for the on the rods were cut there. Um, it worked great. Very happy with that thing so far. A little dab. That's all you need. That's probably more than what you need. Oh, 
wonder if I should sandblast these and powder coat them. We might do that later too, some other time. There you go. Ah, oh, much nicer. It beats the heck out of having that bolt peggy in the hand and that little extra added length for leverage. I'm gonna like it. So, I think that'll do it for this video. All right, I think there's a big improvement. So that's what was in there. We added about another inch to it. Um, definitely a better feeling handle than that stood in your hand, that's for sure. And the leverage, it's very solid feeling now. I'm probably gonna take the handles off, red lock tight them, but um, good upgrade. We use this drill press a lot. So um, everything here made with Tormach, man, I love that lathe. So the, the threads on the end of the studs were just done through the simple conversational built into the program. And then the knobs were uh, modeled up in Fusion and um, the CAD or cam work was done in Fusion. So I got a little bit to learn on that, um, but they turned out pretty good. I'm happy. So until next time, see ya.